The GAMEU 687 valve type is fitted with an optical position indicator as standard. Various optional accessories can be fitted, such as for example a stroke limiter. This must be removed before replacing a diaphragm. Before removal, we advise that you measure the installation length of the opening limit as a point of reference to facilitate subsequent refitting. Now loosen the lock nut using an appropriate tool and dismantle the opening limiter. Please observe the safety regulations before removing the actuator. The default position of the valve is important. This can be recognized by the position of the control air connector. For the valve shown, the control air connector is at the lower end of the actuator. This means that this is a valve closed by spring pressure. Valves closed by spring pressure must be actuated and thereby placed in the open position before disassembly of the actuator. Undo and remove the screws using an appropriate tool. If the screws are difficult to turn, we recommend that you replace them. After removing the actuator, you can inspect the valve seat. Carefully remove any impurities. Move the actuator into the closed position, unscrew the PTFE face anti-clockwise and remove the diaphragm backing. Depending on the valve type, the compressor can be removed. When reassembling, make sure that it is inserted correctly again into the guides. This protects the compressor from being twisted. At the same time, the weir on the compressor is correctly aligned with the sealing weir of the valve body. Before installing the new diaphragm, we recommend that you randomly check the material codes. Line up the diaphragm backing on the actuator flange and screw in the PTFE face in a clockwise direction. When you feel resistance, invert it. You can then raise the corners of the PTFE face diagonally. Screw the PTFE face in further until you can feel clear resistance. At the same time, a dark ring forms in the center of the PTFE face. This means that contact has been made with the diaphragm back. Once this position has been reached, the PTFE face must be rotated backwards until its whole pattern is aligned with that on the diaphragm backing. The PTFE face is then re-inverted. Assembly of the diaphragm is now complete. Return the actuator to the open position and place it on the valve body. If you have correctly assembled the diaphragm, its seal contour will automatically be aligned with the sealing weir of the valve body. During assembly of the actuator, make sure that the control air connector is aligned in its previous position. Insert all screws with the washers and tighten the screw nuts by hand. Now place the actuator in the closed position. As the screws are not yet completely tightened, the diaphragm and actuator can center themselves on the valve body when the valve is closed. This procedure also ensures that the diaphragm is placed under low stress. Evenly tighten the screws diagonally in several steps until you can see a light bulge on the face of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is now compressed by approximately 10 to 15% of its total thickness. If you previously disassembled a stroke limiter, refit it now. The originally measured installation position is used for orientation 
and to reach the approximate flow rate. When fitting the new diaphragm, the required flow value must be checked using suitable reference instruments. The assembled accessories may need to be readjusted. After this, secure the opening limiter with the lock nut again. Due to the natural setting behavior of diaphragm sealing materials, particularly after the first sterilization process, we recommend that you check the compression of the diaphragms at the specified time and retighten the flange fasteners if necessary.